Has time always moved at the same speed? Interestingly, we have an answer, no. At least this is what the reporting is saying about a recently published paper in Nature with headlines around it like time in the early universe moved five times slower. Proven correct a prediction Einstein made over a century ago, but what exactly does this mean? Is this sensationalism or is this science? And how on earth, or I guess in space, would we ever go actually about measuring it? I wanted to find out. So let's start at the beginning. In the beginning, there was a bang. Some say from that point on, everything broadly has gone downhill. But from that moment, our universe has been expanding ever since due to something called cosmic inflation. We see the evidence of this expansion in the light arriving to us from some of the earliest events in the universe's life. The cosmic microwave background, the remnants of the first light that could ever freely travel throughout the universe after the universe cooled and atoms began to form. This light was released 13.7 billion years ago, only a few hundred thousands of years after the Big Bang itself, and obviously long before galaxies or stars ever existed. The the stretching of the universe during this time as light propagated towards us has caused light itself to stretch as its wavelength becomes longer in a process called redshifting. Einstein though taught us that his theory of relativity and that space and time are interlinked. The most common visualization of this theory is to imagine space-time as a literal piece of fabric. So it was assumed that this must mean that stretching of space we are seeing due to things like inflation must also have associated some stretching of time particularly in the very distant universe. We call this cosmological time dilation, that things we observe far away should move in slow motion. We can think of light emitting from an object as a vibration on the electromagnetic spectrum, a rhythmic beating of a drum or a ticking of a clock. If we see stretched light, this corresponds to longer times between those drum beats or the time in that area moving slower. Now the problem with using the cosmic microwave background to observe this effect is that it all comes from roughly the same distance away. So it's hard to measure that this effect is actually the effect that's happening as we only essentially have one measurement point. What would be better is if we could take measurements in distance increments all the way back to the earliest days of the universe to see the relation of that stretching or that slowing down as a function of distance. But strangely as it may seem, as researchers turn to objects they found in the night sky that were at these incremental distances, experiments they ran failed to find much evidence of this time stretching, casting doubt on our entire understanding of cosmological time dilation at the universe's earliest stages. Their light seemed to be independent of the distance they were away from us. That is, however, with some notable exceptions. That of supernova events hinted at this phenomena. Supernova are incredibly bright and sudden explosions in the night sky caused by the death of a star. Evidence was found that these explosions seemed to last longer the further away they were. But as supernova are such short-lived events, they are difficult to study, and our observations of them simply don't stretch back as far in space as we wanted to observe. Researchers needed a better celestial clock to measure by, and recently they found it in quasars. Quasar, short for quasi-stellar object, are extremely luminous, which just means bright in physicist. Quasars are a type of active galactic nuclei, or AGN, a center of a galaxy. They are absolutely massive, typically hundreds of millions of times more massive than our sun, with the largest recorded being more than a billion times more massive than the sun. At the center of a quasar is a black hole, born from the collapse of giant stars that grow by gravitationally consuming gigantic volumes of dust, gas, stars, and even other black holes. The light that they then emit is typically thousands of times brighter than the entirety of the Milky Way put together. Their celestial glow is driven by an accretion disk, a spiraling disk of matter that orbits around the black hole, the matter that is ultimately being drawn in to be consumed. 
But prior to that point, the incredibly intense friction produced by the matter in this accretion disk from the countless collisions of particles of dust and gas generates huge amounts of thermal energy and superheats the black hole system, producing the electromagnetic radiation that we can detect millions of light years away. Since quasars are observed far past the maximum distance we've ever observed a supernova explosion, this light and the potential redshift it can contain could tell us the extent and the potential for time dilation present in the early universe. So what did the researchers find? Did they see these massive galactic structures spinning in slow motion? Researchers from the University of Sydney took a sample of 200 quasars at a range of distances from Earth, measured over two decades of observations, to try and find evidence of systematic redshift or time dilation across these populations. Splitting the quasar populations into four archetypes and comparing the light curves that they produced, which just means the wavelengths of light that they had emitted, as a function of distance from us, these light curves were fitted with a theoretical model where cosmological time dilation's effect on the redshift of the quasar light had been taken into account, and another which demonstrated no dependence on the redshift of light. For the expected cosmological dependence, n should equal 1, while if n was found to be close to 0, it would demonstrate no time dilated redshift dependence. This is the result that several previous studies on quasars had found, and this was why the scientific field up until this point had been so confused by past results. From these two decades of observational data, they found a value for n of about 1.29, closest to the cosmological dependence. But also, the authors acknowledge this might potentially be hinting at some additional physics or phenomena that may be taking place. Okay, but I've got a question for you. This whole time I've been slightly unfairly drawing a photon moving through space as a little wiggle. And in that setting, you can kind of understand how an expanding universe might also result in an expanding photon wave. But in reality, a photon is kind of more like a point particle. It doesn't really have any size. So in that setting, how does a expanding universe expand a point particle? What does it even mean that we see light get redshifted? I want to know what you think. Leave your answers in the comment section down below. In the furthest population of quasars from us, this observed shift corresponded to a redshift equivalent to a cosmological time dilation of 5x. Those vibrations of the earliest universe, by the time they had arrived to us, were oscillating at one-fifth their original speed. But does that mean we saw them spinning five times slower than they actually were back in the day? Well, yes. That is, if we could actually see them with that level of resolution, they would be spinning more slowly. But no telescope capable of seeing that far with that level of resolution is available at the moment, probably ever. But the question we wanted to answer was, is it fair to say time moved five times slower in the early universe? I would say no. These headlines seem to have grabbed a compelling, but the wrong, end of the stick. However, is it fair to say that time hasn't always moved at the same speed? Absolutely. Time is never moving at the same speed. These results prove cosmological time dilation is happening, all the way back to pretty much the formation of the universe. Einstein's theories of relativity hinge upon the idea of the reference frame, that time and space are not absolute, but rather they depend on where you are in the universe and who you are observing. If there had been a person there to experience it, their time would have been ticking along normally at their own rate. But now we are watching it unfold 13.7 billion years later, it's unfolding at a fifth of the speed to us. This also hints at something deeper. It gives us an alternative access route to a strange future property of the universe. If at the distances we've measured, one second is taking five seconds for us to observe it, at some point further away, one second will take ten seconds to observe. At some distance even further, the passage of time we will see will stretch for forever. And further than that, time will never even reach us, as the universe is expanding faster than light can traverse the expanding gap. 
As the universe continues to grow, from Earth there will be a distance from which new information will never reach us. Only the darkness of space will exist. And as the universe continues to expand, more and more galaxies will move past this horizon. We'll watch the lights of the night sky all fade into the distance in cosmic slow motion before they all blink out. So make sure to look up while there's still time. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like or any questions that you have in the comment section down below. If you want more universe strangeness, check out this video on whether the sun will destroy the internet in 2025. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.